Kingston 25. Click subscribe. That's right. Kingston 25. Hello there, how are you going? I've got a special guest with me once again, one of my favourite YouTubers. He was also one of the first YouTubers to subscribe to me. Welcome to Sydney, Australia, by the way. Here he is, Saint Fletcher. How are you going, Saint? G'day, everybody. It's a Saint here, and there's no doubt a link that so I'll link. I'll carry on for the uh, conversation from my channel. That was the hop on, hop off bus. <laughs> But uh, Dennis the Hop Hopper is not here. But uh, you know, that's Sydney for you. You just never know what's going to happen next. So you've lived in Sydney, what, about 20 years or so? I've, been, I've lived here since uh, 19... Uh, <laughs> shows how old I have. In the late 1980s. And uh, late 1980s, and Sydney was a very different place. Has it changed a lot? Oh God, yes. God, yes. It's changed. Obviously, the skyline's changed a bit, but the what? The skyline's have, changed. What else has changed? Um, the streets themselves look very different. Um, the curbing of the streets were um, the old curbing was all convict chiselled back then, which was quite rugged. But I quite liked that because you could see their little signatures in the, in the little chisel. And, and I think they're a bit sorry that they got rid of those because <laughs> they lost something. And every now and again they had these little horse troughs um, that they left there from when they had horses and carts, which again could have been heritage listed but they removed them. Um, there was one on Cleveland Street, you know, they had this horse trough. Um, and um, I decided to live here um, from Melbourne, which Melbourne is in many ways is um, probably uh, a much more stylish and um, comfortable and in many ways a better Sydney city. But Sydney, there's something about the place which got its hooks into me and brought me here. Well, you live in one of the most colourful areas of Sydney. You live in the King's Cross area, Potts Point area. What changes in King's Cross have you seen? Well, I haven't always lived in King's Cross. When I first moved here, I lived, first lived in Redfern, which back then was very rough. Um, and um, we uh, you know, had a share house of you know five or six different people, you know, as people did in those days. And um, we had a fantastic time. Um, then Surrey Hills. I was a, I was a Surrey Hills person um, back then. Um, I never thought of living in Potts Point. I always thought that that was for you know snobby people or you know. Um, and uh, um, I know I didn't actually think to look at the prices to think, see that. Well, actually, Surrey Hills has now become more expensive than Potts Point. It's it really Potts Point was, was more expensive then, but now Surrey Hills is it's much of a muchness really. So, um, yeah, if you're going to live in Surrey Hills, you might as well live in Potts Point, you know. But uh, Surrey Hills has certainly changed too. Um, you can, I can barely um, recognise it from when I first lived there. Um, it's the, uh, a lot of the old um, buildings have been knocked down, like the library. Um, it's, um, once they've got the black facades, the, the, the uh, lines um, of the buildings, you know, that uh, the trendies have moved in. Um, it was an Irish ghetto, Surrey Hills was a very, very Irish area. Um, probably, well, you would you would even know it now. Um, and Oxford Street is so different now to what it used to be. For better or worse? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, um, what I used to like about the place was there was there was the Exchange Hotel, which was really quirky in those days, and the quirkiness in the building is quite rough. The pubs were really rough back then. They had bare floorboards, but they were rough floorboards. The walls were scummy. Um, it, they had the real lived-in look, which you know it was a punk era. It just just fitted with the punk era, and. Um, they had a hall of mirrors there. Marilyn was uh, had it was punched out by Boy George, um, and all of this sort of stuff was just quirky and just silly. Um, which the 80s it just sort of like it just went, and you know everyone got stabbed in the eye by each other's hairdos. 
Um, and, um, to get down to the dance floor, we had to walk through the men's toilets to get down to the dance floor, which is just really bizarre when you're at the urinal and women walking past to get to the dance floor. That was really weird. Um, you know, things like quirky just like that, you just don't have in Sydney anymore. Well, we've talked a lot about the appearance of Sydney. What about attitudes? Well, the 80s um, was a different generation. Um, I probably romanticise about it too much as you do. But, I mean, like, thinking about it now, um, in some ways, um, attitudes were much harder in the 80s. Uh, people were, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be as honest as I can here. There was a, a hardness about uh, an 80s attitude, and people called it the attitude of the pouty sort of, you know, statuesque thing. Um, and although even with that, that was just a facade, that was just a, an eggshell, um, there wasn't so much um, an arrogance that went with that. It was just, um, it was all theatre, really. Um, and strangely enough, in that brittle sort of um, attitude thing, was strangely not that snobby. It was, but it wasn't. It was a paradox, I guess. And the more strange you were, the, 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 in terms of your clothes and your hair, it had to be crazy and all the rest of it, the more you fitted in by not fitting in. It was, it was an anti, uh, anti conformity anti conformity conformist conformism sort of thing. People didn't conform. Um, which I think probably came from Britain in the Thatcher years. You know. So what do you think have been the biggest changes in Sydney? Feely now, um, which um, and communicating is completely different now. Um, they communicate with each other much better than we did, um, which uh, is, is a real problem back there with this attitude thing. Um, generally, um, and finally, Fletcher, what are your hopes for the future? For me, for Sydney, for Sydney. That's a long pause. Yeah. Is yeah. there no hope? Is there no hope? Oh, there's always hope. I, um, I just hope that you're going to have to edit this. <laughs> I, 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 um, hope for Sydney. I just hope that Sydney can work out um, all of the problems of congestion, all the problems of uh, people being an island, um, people conforming so much that they're unhappy. I would like to see the joy and the happiness that we had in the 80s, the innocence, um, the, um, the boldness coming back. Um, and 
there is there is a satisfaction which people don't have. People are not satisfied. I would like people to feel that that strength and that satisfaction again, to be happy with themselves and their lives again. Um, I think you know that 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 is that would be something. I think. Fletcher, thanks so much. Okay. Talk to you later. Kingston twenty five. Click subscribe. That's right. Kingston.